In terms of biopsychosocial treatment, the factors that a provider must know is that it's critically important to look at all the factors that are affecting a patient's uh, pain condition. Anytime we pigeonhole ourselves in any one category, whether it's the medical piece, the psychological piece, or the physical piece, we're losing sight of the bigger picture. So everybody needs and would benefit from that biopsychosocial paradigm. How much of each component varies from one individual to the next, but it's critically important that providers are looking at things uh, from that paradigm, both as they look at the etiology of pain and the treatment of pain and the uh, perpetuation of pain. There's sometimes a misconception that when you bring psychology into pain, you're doing that because the pain is just in a person's head or the pain's not real. And there are some pain conditions that are rooted 100% in psychogenic factors where it is related to psychiatric issues. Even if that's the case though, that person's experience of pain is still real. So there's really not any such thing as pain that doesn't exist or pain that's not real. It's just what's causing it could be something different. But that's just a, a small number of patients that have that type of true psychogenic pain. What we know of with virtually all patients living with pain is that psychological factors can directly influence the onset and the maintenance of the pain condition. Even if it's not what caused the pain, we know that depression, anxiety, stress levels, uh, sleep patterns, uh, activity patterns, all these things can affect the overall pain intensity and how engaged a person is with life. And so we have to take a look at these things if we want to help patients move forward. So even though a patient's pain may not be rooted in 100% psychogenic factors, psychological factors can always affect the pain that a person has and influence that bottom line. So the barriers that we face when we tell patients they can learn to live with pain, um, they're quite vast. So there are some patients who um, say, I don't want to live with pain. Um, you know, pain has taken a, a lot out of my life and I don't want to learn to live with it. I just want it gone. Um, that's a significant barrier, but it's understandable. And the way that we approach dealing with that is helping a patient work toward a model of acceptance. And acceptance doesn't mean that they give up the fight, uh, but accepting the reality of the chronicity of their pain and learning how they can still have very good quality of life despite the presence of pain. For a lot of patients, it's hard to conceptualize that because their experience of pain is just what it is at that time. They have, when you tell them you have to learn to live with pain, they think it's learning with pain at that intensity and with that degree of interference. But managed pain is completely different. Uh, the discomfort, of course, will still be there, but if a person's able to be engaged in more productive activities, things that are more meaningful, then the pain becomes more of a, a nuisance variable. And when we conceptualize that to patients or help them start to see what that can look like, that goes a long ways and we're able to help shift their conceptualization of learning to live with pain and they become more open to it.